Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to Whiskey, Whiskey, and Rye. Oh, my. Oh, I'm Gina. I didn't know it was called that, but <laughs> it I like it. it. It's good, right? <laughs> Happy I'm Saturday. G- Happy Saturday. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Uh, I'm Gina. I'm Robbie G. And the we, professor. The professor, that's right, um, from Venissimo. And we thank you all for tuning in to this number nine Something virtual like that. tasting mm-hmm. um, in this crazy, crazy world. Can't but, keep uh, track of days or numbers anymore. No, not at all. Not at all. But this is a good one. Uh-huh. <laughs> and who cares if we can keep track when we have four whiskeys to try today? Four whiskeys and what, five cheeses? Six cheeses. Six Cheeses. This is dinner and then some. Exactly. This is, is dinner and really, drinks. really good. So um, welcome everyone. Um, I'm going to start by kind of taking you on a tour, a little journey around the cheese plate, so we can kind of see which cheeses are which. Um, and I'll go over them again as we pair them. But just to give you a lay of the land, uh, this really white, creamy, softest one, with or without weeds on it, mm-hmm. and the weeds are time, not really weeds. This soft and creamy one, Saint Angel. Okay. Then, if you've got this orangey looking one that has blue, it's really hard to show you, orange with blueing in it, that one's called Shropshire. And you can see all the names of these cheeses on the tag that's on the lid of your plate. Okay, that one's Shropshire. This one um, that's yellowish on the inside and it's got this kind of mm, crusty ish, uh, moldy ish looking rind on the outside and is shaped like a triangle, mm-hmm. is called Toilet. Three milks, we'll get into that. Um, the next one that has a really crusty outer rind is the Bufarolo. Okay. This one that's really slippery. It's going to be the shiniest one on your board. Also a triangle, and it kind of looks like it has just a pale yellow paste on the outside. La Dama Sagrada. And what am I missing? The big chunk down here. Something that's just kind of in a little chunky form is called Old Farm Doll. Okay. Then you've got cranberries, apricots, almonds, and little picos, which are little crackers, to eat at your leisure. These are the palate cleansers. We're drinking a lot of whiskey. I'm glad nobody's driving after this. <laughs> <laughs> so these are palate cleansers and meant to fill you up. So um, if you want to get schnockers, I guess you can, but be very careful. We have lots to go through today. Um, I'm going to be careful myself because, Rob, this is kind of a first for me. I'm not um, familiar with all these whiskeys, so I'm going to take this journey with you all uh-huh. and Rob's going to teach us mostly all of this today. Yeah so we're going to just kind of we're going to try to taste in order but we're going to take our time um, as you see we have a lot to to taste and go through today and what we've done is um, these are this is our suggested order and how we're going to taste it we've got um, the four whiskeys and we're going to try two cheeses which each with each of the first two whiskeys and then a single cheese for the last for numbers three and four whiskey um, but we as always recommend holding a little back so don't just slam down the triple cream right away yeah. save a little bit for the for all of the whiskey so we're yeah. going to play around and mix and match because maybe something we're not expecting is going to be the highlight the home run the the big winner today exactly because i took guesses yeah um but this is going to be a fun exploration for everybody uh food exploration we're going to start with mm-hmm. the 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 whiskey on our far right and which elijah one is that elijah craig the elijah craig and that's mm-hmm. a kentucky bourbon and uh, so Kentucky bourbon is made in the United States and in Kentucky and it, it's made in uh, or it's, it's aged in charred barrels and so this one is, a, is the what we thought was the mildest of the bunch and a little bit sweeter um, so we wanted to start with that yeah and um, and we'll work our way up but you know be be uh, conservative be on those pours Gina be careful there. I know yeah, that's a bit big I'm not drinking this whole thing don't you be worried as far as I know I don't think so um, um, and you can you okay so Rob you know if you don't have a fancy glass you could just yeah you can right do that out of the bottle if you if you want to be if you want why I was gonna not? say this reminds mm-hmm. me of going to concerts when I was in college and oh you know, having, did you do that hey, yeah. well, you know, I might have <laughs> that's too good so okay can I just say yeah. too what was I gonna say I haven't even had any yet but I'm not quite sure what I was gonna say other than glassware mm-hmm Shot glasses, you could do out of little shot glasses. There are little whiskey glasses, right? Yeah. These are little, they're meant for schnapps, for Austrian schnapps. Um, but I figured they're so gorgeous that why not use them? Yeah? They are cute. Any kind of glass will do, right? Give it give it a little swirl. Okay. Give it a nose. A nose. So I, mm-hmm. I'm going to give you, um, I tested these before Rob got here to try <laughs> to put them in the order that I think was good. And I do think this is the sweetest of the bunch. Uh-huh. So before I butcher the word, I'm going to say to all of you... Slancha, which is cheers, cheers in 
Gaelic, right? Cheers. Cheers. Slancha to all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Reminds me of my dad. He used to drink highballs. And as kids, he's from Russia and mm-hmm. they're drinkers, okay? So he would give us sips of highballs. Mm-hmm. I remember thinking I was so cool because. No, I got to not drink. vodka? No. He was never a vodka person. Uh-huh. High balls. So, this is what this reminds me of. It's sweet. It's delicious. It's smooth. I'm liking this. And which cheese are we thinking I should start with? We're going to start with uh, St. Angel, which okay. is a triple cream. Okay. And uh, you made me think when I mentioned vodka and you said Russia, mm-hmm. the. I mean, these whiskeys would all look like vodka if they weren't aged in the oak barrels. That's where the oh, color really? comes from. Yeah, so and a lot not of the from flavor. Cooking or uh, so that the, the barrels could be are giving their color, and the barrels could be charred, or they can Isn't be um, mm-hmm. they, the, they could have been previously um, used to, to store uh, wine or, or other whiskey. But yeah, they impart a lot of color, and, and de- depending mm-hmm. on the amount of time that they're aged, that's going to affect the color and the flavor as well. So a lot of times you pick up that oakiness or woody or um, oh my gosh! Yeah, spiciness. Uh huh. From the wood. Um, Oak. Nice. So the um, there's a couple cheeses we wanted to do, but the first one we'll start with is the Saint Angel, and when we it is the triple cream Brie style. It is from the Rhone Alps, so it's not from the the region of Brie in France. So it's really a Brie style and not a um, an official Brie cheese. Um, it's more buttery and rich and actually milder than those really mushroomy earthy Brie's. Um, but it's uh, like a lot of cheeses, you, um, you, you may know or you may recognize um, that name, Saint Angel, but uh, Saint Andre, Saint Agur, Saint this all or the that. The, the, all the saints are, get, a, get a, a cheese named after them. And that's because um, a lot of cheeses were originally made by, yeah. by monks in the Middle Ages. Okay. And uh, when they made some incredible creation, they, would, they thought it was an act of God. And uh, so that's why saintly. you see, yeah, it was a, it was a saintly act. So you, you see mm-hmm. a lot of cheeses with saint names. Okay. Um, so Saint Angel. This should be named Saint Elijah because that's really smooth and creamy and yummy, just like the cheese. I like this pairing. Elijah Craig mm-hmm. was a, he was actually a Baptist preacher. And so there is a religious uh, <laughs> connection Seriously. there. I swear to God. You're not making that no, up. No, he was a real person. He was a, he was a Baptist preacher in Kentucky, and he, was, he, he made his own what? bourbon. And, yeah. uh, and they say he was kind of accidentally the creator of bourbon. And they say that there was a fire in his mill, and it charred all the barrels. What? And they went on to continue making whiskey that way. And it, that's where the char came from. And so Elijah Craig, Baptist preacher... Um, is the, the father the of father. Kentucky, uh, Kentucky uh, bourbon. bourbon. 1789, it says on the bottle. There you go. So, whoa. Um, I love this. This is really great. <laughs> that teeny bit. Yes, pace yourself. Uh-huh. It's already it's so warm. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And by the way, if anybody has questions, you can jump onto the chat. I'm going to try to keep a look-see if you have anything you would like to ask. Um, feel free to do so. And the cheeses are all over the place today. We are, are not it's being It's experimentation, shy. yeah. That, that's going to be the mildest of the bunch. We always try to go in order from mild to wild. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't mention that's a cow's milk cheese. Mm. Brie style, cow's milk. And uh, there's a little bit of a white rind on there, which is totally edible. But it's up to you whether or not you like it, whether or not you want to eat it. I've noticed on this cheese that the there there is a different texture it's going to ripen from the outside in so it's going to be a little bit chalkier and a little bit firmer in the center of the cheese and then a little riper and darker towards the rind yeah. and that's really good that's when it gets more luscious uh-huh. oh yeah it's on the rind on the runny runny part of the cheese so with the soft cheeses the runnier it is the stronger that it is definitely yeah. yeah so if you like if you like it stronger let it sit in your fridge for a little bit or come in and ask your cheesemonger hey what's what's ripe what's really stinky yeah. right now yeah we'll steer you good. in the right direction we'll, we'll get you to the right place um <laughs> yes i thought rob mm-hmm. that the bufarolo might be also fun with this yeah. so can we try that yeah, yeah and absolutely. once again everybody and rob you should be eating some of these the bufarolo you guys has the really crusty rind yeah. It. The crusty, crusty outer edge. And what makes Bufarolo so cool, which is a treat, is what is it made of? Bu- so Bufarolo is really unique in that it's made with buffalo milk. Yeah. And so, so uh, we have thousands of cheeses at the shops. They, they come and go all the time. Um, really, they, they're all made with a few simple ingredients. And the most important ingredient is the milk. Um, so the, the most common animals are goat, sheep, and cow. The first cheese was cow's milk. The least common of the animals is buffalo, 
And furthermore, in that category of buffalo milk cheeses, I would say 90% of the buffalo milk cheeses out there in the world are mozzarella di bufala. That's buffalo milk mozzarella. That's the traditional one that, that comes from southern Italy. So there's, there are a few, very few, buffalo milk cheeses that are made into not mozzarella. Um, so this cheese itself, the buffarolo, is from Bergamo, which is in northern Italy. It's, a, it's from a region called Lombardy. Um, so the cheese gets made there in northern Italy. It then gets sent over to Brooklyn to a place called the Crown Finnish Caves. And they are this tunnel system. It's a, they're an aging facility underneath bustling Brooklyn, New York. So pretty, pretty cool concept. They, um, they, they get the cheeses when they're really young and there's no rind or anything. And um, they actually will wash this cheese in a local beer and they'll flip them and age them and keep an eye on them until that crusty rind forms and until they feel like they're ready to go to market. And um, so there is debate as to you know, who makes this cheese. Is it the, the original, the cheese maker in Northern Italy or is it the, um, the finishing mm. cave in Brooklyn, New York, that finishes and decides when the cheese is ready for market. Yeah. The, a lot of times this happens in the, in the cheese world. It happens even sometimes in the whiskey world, which we're, we're going to talk about. But for, for cheeses, there are, there are companies and people that have a full-time job as affineurs. And that comes from the Latin, which means to the limit, and it refers to aging cheese. So mm-hmm. sometimes the maker and the ager the affineur are one are the same person, but sometimes the maker passes it on to somebody else who's expert at aging the cheese, and that's what they do here. Yeah. And who gets credit? Who gets credit? I mean, when these that's cheeses hard. go for awards, it's like they they bring up the maker and the affineur, and uh, and I'm sure there are times where a maker is like. They, they let go of their baby and, and maybe yeah. they're really excited about what the affineur does with it, but other times, maybe not yeah. so much. This one is great though. This one is really great and I like it also equally well mm-hmm. with this Kentucky bourbon. Um, but I'm torn on that. What do you think? Who should get most credit? Because I know, Rob, how hard it is to make cheese. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just feel like, boy, the work of the cheese maker, mm-hmm. give them some really good credit where credit is due. The, the, yeah. cheese, the cheese maker, their job is to take their, their natural resources and they, they want their cheese to express their land and the ingredients. Yeah. I mean, they really want it to express mm-hmm. the, the bare, um, the quality of the ingredients, which is the milk and the land. And uh, it, so it, it's hard because yeah. in, in this case, the, the, the aging and it really in all cases, the aging part of the process is where a cheese gets all of its character. Mm-hmm. It's where uh, the rind forms. Exactly. It's where the eyes form in Swiss cheeses yeah. and Jarlsberg type cheeses. Without the aging, you wouldn't have all these. No, very there would be no character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the, Equally. The, the opposite of an aged cheese mm-hmm. is a fresh cheese. It's one that does not age at all. Mozzarella. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so one way to tell a fresh cheese is that they do not have a rind because that forms during the aging process. Mm-hmm. So that the other type of buffalo milk cheese that I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, this long speech <laughs> this of mine <laughs> is th- that's a fre- those are fresh cheeses, no rind, and mozzarella, ricotta, burrata. Those are you know those are like the Italian family of fresh cheeses, and um, so this is what happens to buffalo milk with a little bit of age um, on it and some character on the cheese. And by the way, you can eat that rind. Um, again, it's up to you if you're if you're into it. If you're if you're not scared off by the look of it, go for it. It's just going to be kind of gritty, and uh, it could be slightly fibrous or, or bitter in in uh, flavor and texture. Yeah, but, but it's go good. for it. Mm-hmm. I, I think the rind is not bitter on this one. Mm-hmm. I expected it to be. Looking at it, it looks like oh heck no, I'm not going to. Well, that. look how much the brine goes into the paste of the cheese. I know. It's like growing in there. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Everybody, there's always a technical difficulties. I have my tech support working on to see why the live chat is not working right now. So hold your questions. Hopefully it will be repaired shortly. Mm-hmm. On that note, sorry for the interruption. <laughs> Back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> um, okay, so we've done yes, whiskey bourbon. one. Okay, wait. But this oh, sorry, bourbon. bourbon. Bourbon has to be from Kentucky. Yeah. Correct, yes. Mm-hmm. But all of them have to be aged in oak. Char- charred, charred oak. American white oak. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
And whiskey, is it corn? Rye? What do we know? We know there's rye oh whiskeys, gosh. and we're going to get to a rye. But what are the other ones that it could be? Corn. Whiskey is, yeah, so bro- it's a broad category of mm-hmm. alcoholic beverages that are distilled in grains and are subsequently okay. aged in oak casks. Okay. So the grains used to make various types of whiskey include barley, malted rye, rye, mm-hmm. wheat, and maize or corn. corn. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right. Sounds good. And the other thing, too, is um, sometimes you see whiskey spelled with a Y and sometimes... I'm sorry. Sometimes whiskey has an E and sometimes it does not have an E. Um, so for Scottish, Canadian, Japanese, and, and Indian whiskeys, they do not have the E. And for uh, American and Irish whiskeys, there is an E. So there's, that's the only difference between whiskey and whiskey. Why? I don't know. Why? We don't know. <laughs> I do not know. But, um, <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> that won't be on the test later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so we've got, um, I, that's good because we've started now, we've got our cow's milk covered, we've got the, the buffarolo covered, and by the way, the beards, it's um, washed in, is a farmhouse ale, and it's, um, I'm not sure which one, but it's one from back east. That yeah. they, it might be made in, in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Okay, a couple questions. Now I've got the chat back up and running, at least on one of our systems, um, asking which is the buffarolo, just to confirm. Mm-hmm. That's the one with this thick, thick brown rind, um, and... Kind of firm. Oh, a lot of people, a little firm. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Very white paste. Mm-hmm. Um, people are loving it though. Oh, good. This, which is, I'm agreeing. I think that it's super, super good with that. So I've got a couple people that love it. Um, Rob, really quick, the purpose of washing in yeah. beer, wine, you know, oh, yeah. beer, wine. Um, is whatever, somebody whiskey. asking about that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So the the um, the washing is also the job of the affineur, the guy who ages the cheese. And so it, it's done for a, lo- a lot of reasons, um, but but mostly to give the cheese flavor, pungency um, in flavor and aroma. The, the aroma is always stronger than the flavor, yeah. um, but uh, it, it, uh, it gives kind of, a, it, it allows for a bacteria growth and you can use many different liquids to, to wash a cheese. In this case, it's beer. We're gonna see later on one of the other cheeses we're tasting is washed in a brine mm-hmm. and that just means salt water, but it encourages a bacteria and mold growth and, uh, and it just, the cheese sort of goes out and does its own thing it, it, it'll react with the cave or the room where it, it's aged and um sometimes crazy things happen and you just yeah. you just have to kind of let it go and then and, and just taste it later to see what happens let it go let it grow let it that go, could be good grow. right all you frozen fans out there let it grow <laughs> let it grow for the rinds and the molds. that is good I wouldn't like that be good okay notice yourself that'll be the next time we do that little and anyway, speaking you know speaking of that too i mean th- that first cheese the saint angel the which is the the brie with the white rind if um, if an affineur is aging the buffarolo and also the Saint Angel in the same building, they're gonna have it in a different room mm-hmm. because it'll it'll spray that room yeah. with um, with the, the 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 mold that white mold that grows onto mm-hmm. the the brie. And day one when you when you go into that room, you won't see anything. It'll just be a like a block of cheese with no rind, yeah. almost like a fresh cheese. Mm-hmm. And then by day three or so, you'll start to see that white mold growing. And after a week, it's a full-on what they call a bloomy rind. And when we get these breeze and these these whoopsies, <laughs> these types of cheeses, whoopsies. Too much whiskey. <laughs> when we get those types of cheeses in the shop, we can actually put a like a finger stamp on them, and um, they you can I mean you, you can um, it's almost like they're like hair growing yes and it's so fluffy mm-hmm. um, fluffy is a good word fluffy. Like, like okay if anyone knows fresh snow uh-huh. powder yeah, you know, yeah, yeah that's what it reminds me of fresh powder on a ski slope it's just you don't even want to touch it it's just so fluffy it's, it's crazy but yeah. a lot of times you'll hear that referred to as bloomy rind but mm-hmm. that, that's what they're mm-hmm. talking about and brie is yeah. the main type of cheese for that but goat cheeses have that too I mean we, some of that we've talked about on these virtual yeah. tastings Boucheron Queso mm-hmm. or Humboldt Fog mm-hmm. they all have that bloomy rind bloomy's good Bloomy's good. Bloomy from Bloomies to uh-huh. Bushmills. Ooh. Let's try this, everyone. Probably this is probably the most recognizable brand mm-hmm. that we had today. I think so. Um, let's see it. Yeah. So, but I've, mm-hmm. I am going to try it maybe for the first time. I've seen the bottle, but we're going to try it together. So. And I'm not Slancha. sure the age on this one, mm-hmm. but uh, tell us about Bushmills. Where's this one from? Ireland. It's Irish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there should be an E. Is there an E on that? This doesn't have nearly the um, aroma, not at all, uh-huh. of this bourbon. Nothing. Like I don't, I don't smell anything. And <laughs> That's so, so if, weird. If we want, and whiskeys have 
they just have um, a, a few flavor characteristics. A lot of them have a sweetness, kind of an inherent sweetness. And so for complimentary tastings, we, one, we have to stand up to the whiskey. So we do a lot of goudas and, and cheddars, which believe it or not have sweetness when you really get yes, down to the flavor definitely. on those. And they can stand up. Um, so if we want to do something regional and complimentary, a good Irish cheddar would be fun with that. We wanted to get a little bit funkier with these. Yeah, uh, though. it's funky and good. Um, and then the other thing that a lot of the whiskeys are going to get, we might taste this as we move on to the stronger ones, is the, that peaty and kind of um, that real that real strong, almost like um, fiery <laughs> sensation. <laughs> like, I, don't know, I don't know if that makes sense. Whatever that is, that is good. <laughs> Pete. Pete. Um, to go to a couple of questions, Affineur, you uh-huh. spell it A F F I N E U R. French word, yeah. Affineur. Affineur. To answer that question, um, this is delicious. Or we'll you can to- also look up <laughs> Affinage, A F F I N A G E. Yes. Affinage. The, the verb. No, um, the, <laughs> the art of. <laughs> the art of aging. Of aging. The Affineur does affinage, right? Uh, yes. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Using rhymes in soup stock was Ooh, a question that came good. up. Really good. I've only done it with the very hard rhymes of Parmigiano Reggiano. Mm-hmm. So that's never, ever, 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 ever throw the rind mm-hmm. of Parmigiano away. It can be hard as a rock. You could like pound nails with it, mm-hmm. or you could throw it in your soup stock and give it good flavor. But let's right. let's make sure we we um, talk about why we, we do yeah. that. It's flavor. Yeah. So flavor, there's tons yeah. of flavor locked into a, say, a Parmesan or Reggiano rind. Don't just throw any rind into the soup stock because some rinds are really not, they, there's no flavor locked into them. That includes wax, that includes paper, that includes <laughs> oil. oil. <laughs> uh, thanks for the hot tip. Okay. <laughs> or like a brie rind. Yeah. I, I don't know that there's a lot of flavor locked no. into that. That's more of like a protective um you know, skin yes, on, exactly. on the outside. Really, it's the hard parm. It's the yeah. hard parm in the hard northern Italian cheeses, the Montazios, mm-hmm. the Asiagos, the Piaves. Yes. And those are cheeses that, again, going back to day one of their life, mm-hmm. they are soft and they're edible. And the, after sitting on an in an aging room for a year, two years, five years, they become... Yeah. Hard as a rock. Yeah. I mean, they would break your teeth. But you're not going to waste that. No. Yeah. You could throw it in your soup and stew. Great it's... question. And that was from Mary. Great question, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Thanks, oh, Mary. Before I forget, I just want to say, I was in the Del Mar shop today. <laughs> okay. I know. I keep like, I, I digress. <laughs> but I saw four or five or six um, folks who came to pick yeah. up the, the plates, and I had a really great conversation with all you guys. So it was really great to see you. And yes. we, are, we were just talking before. We're going to continue doing this for forevermore. Forever, <laughs> and so on and so forth. In the meantime, I like this Irish whiskey. Oh, what good. it reminds me of is—I know I've had it before because it tastes like a hot toddy, oh, which nice. is my favorite winter <laughs> drink. Um, so, um, it, it's delicious. Good. It's, the aroma is not there, but the flavor is mm-hmm. there. And I wanted to try this, Rob. I have this one down the Bushmills with two of them. Mm-hmm. The La Dama Sagrada. So I'm just picking okay. this one up. Yeah. La Dama Sagrada, everybody. It's a triangle on your plate. It's very thin. It's very slippery. If your cheese has been sitting out, this is weepy and it's um, oily looking. And why is that, Rob? So the all the oil and the fats will come out. You mm-hmm. want... You want the hard cheeses especially Mm -hmm. to sit out for a good half an hour, 45 minutes, even a couple hours you're safe Mm -hmm. um, before you you taste, before you dig into them. If you're ever wondering when you come into one of our shops why it tastes so good when you when you're standing there at the counter someday we'll be able to get back to this exactly <laughs> tasting cheese mm-hmm. it's because we we pull them out in the morning and we let them come to room temperature and that brings out the flavor and, and yeah. everything to the surface that Much you better. want but it will look really kind of greasy and oily and slippery and this one especially because it is sheep milk oh, goat's milk no yeah oh. believe it or not so i and i want to talk about that so the la dama sagrada but why is it slippery um, so it's, it's, I mean, there is a lot of fat and good stuff mm-hmm. in goat's milk, just not quite as much mm-hmm. as sheep or cow's milk. So if it were a sheep's milk cheese, it would be even slipperier. 
Slippery. <laughs> Slippery. Er, er, er. The La Dama so Sagrada mm -hmm. is made in the same region as the most famous, maybe the most famous sheep's milk cheese in the world. Definitely the most famous Spanish cheese, and that is Manchego. a Manchego. And the region is La Mancha. It's the same region that your your buddy Don Quixote is from. In the book, when they talk about the used milk cheese on the back of his uh, of his horse, where you know, or some, maybe his buddy Sancho Panza had that piece of cheese, That's right. it was something similar okay. to uh, to Manchego because it was sheep's milk. This is made in it's a, the cheesemaker who makes this La Dama Sagrada mm -hmm. also makes Manchego, and so they make this kind of Manchego style yeah. cheese, okay. but with goat's milk. And the the goat's milk is from. Um, and you, I, I encourage you guys at home to on your computers to Google Murcia goats, mm. Murciana goats. Super famous. The, the mm -hmm. region is Murcia in Spain. It's on the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. And the goats produce an incredible amount of milk for goats. And That's it's crazy. really, really rich and really, really good milk. This is the richest goat milk I've ever tasted. Oh, i got to yeah. be honest. Yep. I'm super shocked because I fully, in my head, had that as sheep milk all the time. And it's the, really great. the name yeah. means... The sac La Dama Sagrada means sacred lady or sacred dame. I don't like to say, dame seems like a derogatory term. Dame, only if you're from the 50s. Right? Well, it sounds like, dame. you know, it reminds me of the, like the Frank Sinatra, where Phil Hartman yes, played Frank Sinatra exactly. on oh, uh, SNL. Yeah, no, <laughs> but I, I don't, yeah. it's sacred lady. Sacred and I don't know if they're referring okay. to the to the cheese as the sacred lady or the goat or if... if all sacred. Or, or, or I don't know. All Jesus of us ladies mother, and dames are sacred. <laughs> yeah, everyone. Yeah. So, but we, <laughs> we like sacred. it. La Dama Sagrada. La Dama Sagrada. So I tried that with this. Uh huh. I think it's to me. It's kind of meh together. Uh huh. So this other one, I think you guys should try with this, and let's see if you all agree. Is this this cube, this chunk? This is the old farm doll. It's a Gouda. Yeah. You can talk about that one, and let's compare them, you guys, and let's all have a vote. And real quick, somebody asked how much that Buffarolo. Cheese is, that one's a pricey sucker because buffalo milk is rare, uh -huh. hard to come by, and all the affinure, affinage that mm -hmm. happens, that one's $41 a pound. Whoa. So that one's one of the more pricey cheeses out mm -hmm. there. So I'm going to go now to the Old Farm Doll with the Bush Mills. Okay. Should we talk about... This is sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell them about this one. This is a real sweetie. Farm mm -hmm. Farm Doll, style-wise, is a, is a Gouda. Farm Doll just means it's farmhouse, farmstead, and... Um, Goudas tend to be sweet. Uh, they're not sweet like a, you know, like a white chocolate sweet or something like that. It's it's more of a subtle sweetness. But for cheese, they are sweet, and this is aged, and uh, they tend to just be home runs. I mean, if there's one cheese you're gonna get for a whiskey pairing, I would suggest an aged Gouda because of the sweetness. It's complimentary. It stands up to it. Um, Goudas come from Holland in the Netherlands. This one, however, is from Belgium. And uh, so it's, I guess you would say it's a Gouda style. Mm -hmm. This is, and our theme I feel like is, is affinage today. Mm -hmm. This is made in a farm out in the oh. countryside. It, it may come from, from Holland actually, but then it gets passed on to a father-son team who has a cheese shop and an affinage facility in Antwerp or just outside Antwerp. Oh my gosh, so another Belgium. example of mm -hmm. yep. that system, that so process. They, they finish it off. They have another great cheese that they finish off at this facility called OG Crystal, which is one of our favorites. Ridiculous. And um, mm -hmm. but this is it's a Gouda and it's cow's milk. And uh, I'm not sure the age, but I'm gonna guess it's it's probably a year or so. Yeah, and you might I was get the crunchies. That too. Just a slight bit of crunchy mm -hmm. in it. I don't know what everybody thinks of that compared to the La Dama Sagrada, which I just understand. I think I've heard from someone that um, we spelled La Dama Sagrada wrong on the lid. Oh. That's so embarrassing, <laughs> but I'm just- and What I did we spell wrong, Dama or Sagrada? I'm not sure. At this point, you guys, this has been the weirdest two months ever, and we're just trying to keep up, so my apologies. Oh, we but think we need more whiskey. Just come to Venissimo, we'll know what La Dama Sagrada yeah. is, yeah. Um, I like the Old Farm Doll, the sweetness of the Gouda, better than the goat with this, personally. Okay. But we'll see what everybody else thinks. And again, the which one is the Gouda? The question pops up. This is the, it's gonna be the most yellow mm -hmm. cheese on the plate and it's gonna be in a funky chunk shape. Um, when you taste it, you're gonna know it's a Gouda because it's very, very sweet. It's yeah, like exactly. Yeah. The flavor should give it away. It just has more of a sweetness where mm -hmm. the La Dama Sagrada will have more of like a, a gamey, kind of a gaminess, yeah. right? Sagrada with an E. Sagrada, yes. Thank you, Mary. Maybe she's a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I mean, you may know the huge, the beautiful oh. cathedral in Barcelona. Yes. Sagrada Familia. Sagrada Familia. And that so, is with an E. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's the same word. So that was just a... <laughs> Good. Where was spell check when we needed it? Exactly. Maybe, maybe you only have it turned yeah, on to English. I don't know. Yeah, at this point. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I love the Gouda with it. And I think we've got a few comments. The Gouda. I mean, Good. Gouda is... Good. Everybody loves Gouda. Gouda is Gouda. And Gouda again... Go for, mm-hmm. try different Goudas. We can yeah. do all Gouda tasting with different whiskeys, yeah. and I guarantee it'd be great. Whether yeah. we do goat Goudas, sheep Goudas, mixed milk Goudas. Always. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm going back to the bourbon because it's sweet mm-hmm. with the Gouda, just to see. And I'm really glad that these are good cheese selections because these are ones we haven't talked about on any of these yet. The old farm doll is, mm-hmm. is one that we don't always have, but if yeah. you're if you're looking for something similar, the OG crystal is from the same yeah. maker. maker. Especially if you like those crystals. Yeah. All right, Rob, that's funny. I thought that the sweet bourbon with the sweet gouda would be great. It actually made this really um, mm-hmm. alcoholy. Oh, interesting. I like the gouda better with the bush. Interesting. So there you go. I don't know what anyone else thinks. Very nice. Somebody else, though, however, Leanne likes the La Dama with the Bushmills. Mm-hmm. And that's, everybody's taste buds are different, obviously. No Even right or wrong. No, There's definitely just, no right or it's wrong. It's fun to explore, uh-huh. you know. and just I think sometimes you hit some magic that everybody goes, oh, yeah, that's it. But uh, this one is going to be different. Yeah, yeah and, and please try everything with everything. And if you've gotten ahead, then that's no problem that's okay. either. <laughs> yeah, nobody's going to be angry. What's our next whiskey? Next whiskey. Okay, so this one's very fine. Um, Ten-year-aged rye mm-hmm. whiskey, Whistle Pig. So I had originally got this because I wanted something from Vermont. Mm-hmm. But then I read on it that they claim it is from Canada. So right. it's back to that story, mm-hmm. Rob. Yeah, so this is rye whiskey, aged ten years, Whistle Pig. And, oh, you guys... I, we put in the tray a little um, orange peel because I oh, think yeah. orange peel with bourbons, whiskeys always go so good. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to be try to try to pretend I'm a bartender and I'm going to oh. rub my rim with the orange peel. Then I'm going to toss <laughs> it in the glass and then later I will soak it and I will eat it. But um, we put it with this one because you said this has orange notes. It's got notes yeah. of orange. It's okay. got a little vanilla, a little spice to it. So it'd be like a good holiday mm-hmm. whiskey, Christmas time. What a cute bottle. Yeah. Look at this little cork. And that's a 10 year cute. aged. And uh, as, as Gina mentioned, it starts its life in Canada, in Alberta, and uh, it, uh, it then gets, well, it gets aged in American oak at some point. In Canada? It, well, at some point, and I couldn't figure out when, it gets transferred to and bottled in Vermont at this place called Whistle Pig, and they, put, they slap their name on it. So yeah. there is debate, and it kind of goes back and forth. Is this an American or is this a Canadian whiskey? Yes, because they spell it with an E, uh-huh. and you had mentioned the E and the no E. Yep. But they do spell it with an E. So yeah, so I, th- I think the uh, the American company is t- trying to take ownership of it, by, maybe Shocking. by throwing the, the E in there, right? <laughs> Poor Canadians. Poor Canadi- Can I give you a little uh, Canadian, like, uh, cool scoop? Yeah. My name, mm-hmm. Regina, Yes. is the capital of Saskatchewan, Regina, uh. <laughs> <Okay>. Saskatchewan, <laughs> and the name means queen. So... Is did that, you know you were alongside a queen? Well, but, but did your parents, is that why they named you then? He, my dad did, because he went to Canada no, and worked I didn't know. and I did lived not know in, that. Yeah, went from Russia, came to Canada, I, worked in Regina, fell in love with it, knew that it meant queen, knew that I was a queen, hmm. um, and named me Regina, which now I just go by Gina. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that. So, a little family history. The whiskey, history. a little like family that. history. More is going to come out the more whiskey that I drink. This <laughs> <laughs> smells like... Orange, but I think it's because I did the orange peel, uh-huh. so now we'll, we'll do a taste. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for, for you purists out there, I mean, you might want to taste it on its own first. The <laughs> okay. Woo! <laughs> is it too much for you? It's too much. This one is the kind that burns down. Wow. Uh-huh. Is it supposed to do that? It's fiery. It's fiery. <laughs> it bur- This is will warm you up. This one's the harshest to me. The fun thing about yeah. pairing is that sometimes mm-hmm. you have something that on its own is is too much a cheese or a beverage where on its own you just i I can't do it but if balanced with the right with the right um cheese Cheese or vice versa drink so let's see if this is the right cheese all right everybody this is the one that i was guessing would go good with it again it's shaped like a, a, a triangle like this and it's gonna have a very thin natural rind on the outside okay not as thick as the Bufarolo that kind of was a quarter inch thick rind. It's a very delicate, almost whitish rind. This one is called Troilet, mm-hmm. French for three milks. Yeah. Because it's made of 
I'm gonna get the milk right <laughs> this time. Yeah. <laughs> Can you, do you want to try to guess? I'm what gonna try are? to guess. Here, Cow- I'll give you a hint. There's no buffalo milk. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Cow, sheep, and goat. Cow, sheep, and goat. Mm-hmm. This uh. So it's, it's, what's interesting too, it's raw cow's yeah. milk. That means not pasteurized cow's milk. Mm, the okay. sheep and the goat's milk are pasteurized. So is the cheese pasteurized or raw? <laughs> I'm going to say, we're going to say pasteurized because otherwise it's, the whole thing's got to be raw. True. The, so pasteurized it is. It's a Basque cheese. It's from the Pyrenees. And so it has a natural rind and it is a washed rind as well. So you might see or even smell a little bit of the rind. It is... Um, it's kind of crusty and natural looking. It gets passed on to a, another really famous affineur from France this time called Pascal Belaver, and mm-hmm. he selects and ages cheeses, and then they, they come out um, to places like Venissimo. But this is unique in that it's all three milks. We have other ones that have three milks, but each, you don't see a ton of them. Mm-mm. And um, this would be in that Basque, semi-firm, mm-hmm. uh, natural rind family, if you've ever seen the Oso Arati yeah. or um, Pilota, Pilota, Chabrin, mm-hmm. Chabri, the, those those cheeses, Best. they're all in the same family. This is a real funky combination. Yeah? I like it. Is and it I stinky? can't tell you, it's not stinky. Mm-hmm. It's not a cave that I'm tasting. It's an artichoke that's been sitting in a cave. Oh. It's really a weird thing, but I'm liking it with this. It mm-hmm. tames this a little bit. Um, and my understanding, somebody said that rise typically are really strong mm-hmm. regardless um so this one fits the bill for a strong rye then this is funky together i think you guys try this one and then go back if you have any of the gouda left and try this i'm gonna do that next but i like it it's I, I would also suggest mm-hmm. with the strength of that one to try it with the next cheese that we're okay. going to be tasting which too, is the next which is going to be the blue the shropshire okay let's just jump right into that because he says it's strong we're going to go to the blue which is orange and blue mm-hmm. shropshire You'll see the blue veins in it. It's going to be obvious which one is the blue on here. It's, Do you a, it's, think a, this? it's a yellow mm-hmm. base and then the, uh, the blue mold, of course, in the, in the cheese. And this is a good mold. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this one you got to put with ice or with something. I don't know. but Hopefully the, the blue could stand up to it a little bit and, and the blue's tame better. it. Uh-huh. Is it better with it? Yeah. yeah. The blue is super tames uh-huh. it. Uh-huh. It takes it down a notch, but in a good way. You and still if you, get flavor. You mm-hmm. keep keep eating that, and, and tr- you know sometimes you'll get fruitiness or just yeah. flavors just out of nowhere when the, when the two come together. Wow, and completely, Rob. N- this is one that I think nailed uh-huh. the Shropshire with the whiskey whistle pig mm-hmm. is great. That's awesome, and the orange. This is so good. So we've done. We've had two cows' milk, goat, buffalo, and then the. The mixed milk. So we've got a little bit of everything and different textures. And um, okay, so we're gonna move. What are you gonna eat next? Uh-huh. We're saying we got some comments, like Leanne, saying you know how different a cheese can change oh, the yeah. whole profile uh-huh. of a drink, and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it can overpower the cheese, and suddenly you've lost what the cheese tastes like. Um, and but, a fun, uh, a fun way to yeah. do, to do pairings or tastings is to take. A one beverage and you can try it with two opposite cheeses because again there's no right or wrong it's just which what direction do you want to go with the pairing do you want to go yeah. complementary do you want to do contrasting do you want to just go textural yeah. do you want to do regional I mean there's no right or wrong or you just want to eat and drink do you just want to get <laughs> hammered <laughs> and full you want to get exactly. buzzed and full I take it, and think take that that's where I'm at <laughs> I think that that's really good this one I think is going to benefit from a smidge of water because I've had an ice cube waiting for the next one but i'm going to try to tame this with a little ice water and we see what we think we've done a lot of tastings over the years with whiskey masters they've come in and and there's nothing wrong with a little bit of water sometimes the water will will kind of um it'll help you recognize flavors better Mm -hmm. just it kind of opens it up and aroma that's really good Mm -hmm. this is a problem though then i think you could drink more of that (laughs) When you add that little bit of water, yeah. <laughs> that might be bad. It could be a problem. <laughs> yeah, but that's really good. It's really good. So, ooh, so Shropshire with that, you guys. I don't know if everybody liked the Shropshire. Yeah, Shropshire is amazing mm-hmm. with that. Shropshire, whoa, Shropshire. Okay, do we, okay. so that Next. was 
the whiskey. ten year, and then ten the year. next <gasps> the next whiskey, or it's actually a scotch. Scotch is mm-hmm. a twelve year. Mm-hmm. So scotch has to come from Scotland. Mm-hmm. Are you going to try to pronounce this? Okay, I'm going to say <laughs> Buna Hobhain. Buna Hobhain. Buna Hobhain. No way, it's Buna Hobhain. No, <laughs> but I don't Buna know what it is. If you say it really fast. Buna Hobhain. <laughs> no, Buna. If anyone is Scottish out there and can help us with the pronunciation of this, even in the uh, where we bought these, you know, our, our supplier uh-huh. was struggling with this one. But it is delicious. He knew that. Well, and what I can say is, in part of what um, what helped us put these in the in the order that we did was looking at the ages. I mean, age, yeah, much like cheese and people, like- and people, they're going to get to gain character complexity with more of it. And uh, and so and, and maybe get better with age, like like people. The um, so so that's why we put this one fourth on the list here. Um, so a single malt Scotch is made from malted barley, and it's it's uh, matured for a minimum of three years. This is way beyond that, and they come from Scotland. I don't think we had any cheeses from Scotland. We didn't, so we the, couldn't do mm-hmm. a Scottish cheese. It's hard to get them. Very they're hard, hard to get them. They're hard yeah. to find, but there are mm-hmm. there are some out there. A lot of them are cheddar-y, kind of harder cheeses. Mm-hmm. Um, so what did we do? And we did musky. the Shropshire. We did the Shropshire. Another so another this, cheese from the UK. Another from the UK. So this will be different because I've, I hear conflicting reports. Should a whiskey or scotch be chilled? Uh-huh. Should it be more room temperature? You know, in the cheese world, room temperature mm-hmm. rules for sure. But in this whiskey world, we're gonna, in Scotch world, we're going to find out. Okay, so this one. So far, the bourbon has the most aromatic aroma of uh-huh. all of them by far. Mm-hmm. Mm. So this is where people go, oh, it's so smooth. Mm-hmm. And this is probably why they want to have a Scotch to mellow out in the <laughs> evening. That is really, is that the one? really mellow and smooth. Mm-hmm. doesn't burn like the whistle pig. But if you just want burn, go to Whistle Pig. But uh, this one is smooth. I don't know if everybody agrees. Um, can I try this with Shropshire? Go then, for it. And then what did we decide what should be the next one we try with it? Yeah, I, I mean, I would go back and try all of them with it. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe not the the only, the the St. Angel is so mild, I don't know if that's if gonna. Hold up, we'll try that next. Mm-hmm. But definitely I would go with the, with the Gouda and play around and maybe even dab a little bit of the fig jam that's fig jam by the way i don't know if you mentioned oh, yeah. that Gina. i didn't mention the fig jam how do i forget that just for like a, a little blast of, of sweetness to compliment yeah i'm um, gonna go to the san angel okay this is interesting mm-hmm. i like shropshire better with the crazy harshness of the whistle pig mm-hmm. the shropshire kind of got lost to me a little bit on yeah. the um, this one, Buhulahama. Make a lick a high. Make a lick a yeah. Um, <laughs> interesting. But you you don't think the Saint Angel will work? I don't know. I, okay, I but just... if, if anybody has your Saint Angel, that's the Brie again. Let's try together. And we had put a little time decoration on here today. I'm gonna go and take Saint Angel with Scotch. That's better. That's complimentary. Okay. That's like eating, um, you know how you have rum, butter rum frosting? Mm-hmm. You could make a frosting out of the San Angel and the scotch. Well, the word I heard you use is smooth. smooth. And like, well, how would you describe, mm-hmm. San, of all the cheeses, which one's the smoothest smooth. cheese? So you're putting smooth and smooth mm-hmm. together. It's buttery, it's so rich, smooth. it's silky smooth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. So a couple words about the Shropshire. Yeah. Now, Shropshire, uh, you maybe are mind. familiar with Stilton. Mm-hmm. Stilton and Shropshire are kind of like cousins. Um, Shropshire is from the next uh, county over. Um, Shropshire is... Um, it's it's a blue cheese. It is cow's milk blues. Some it's people think it's a little cheese. bit sharper. It's <laughs> the orange is from a nata, which is a natural mm-hmm. dye they put in the cheese. So the the color of the milk is not that orange color. It's a dye that they put in the cheese. Um, the region it comes from is the West Midlands, and um, most famous person from Shropshire. Uh, we're gonna go back a few hundred <laughs> years here, but Charles Darwin. Come on, Gina. No. Charles Darwin is What's from, from Shropshire. Yes. Okay. Does anybody a, know this? I gotta say, yeah. I, um, there's a there's a little town there called Shrewsbury, and uh, it's where they filmed the George C. Scott Christmas Carol. What? I know. And so when when I visited there, I had to go and do the Christmas yeah. Carol because this is not my opinion. This is a fact. That's the best Christmas Carol film. We're gonna have words. <laughs> in just I hope my minute. dad's watching because he would agree with me. <laughs> oh, that'll be another debate. We're gonna do debate. But, we're gonna do some debate <laughs> episodes because we're gonna debate that one. But Shropshire, uh, blue cheese. What's uh, what's fun about 
the Shropshire and the Stilton, because they're similar in texture, is that they're firmer, more crumbly blue cheeses, as yeah. opposed to, say, Gorgonzola, Roquefort, which are creamier and, and yeah. softer and more yeah. spreadable. This is a, a crumbly guy. A crumbly guy. It's really good. Um, it's almost, you could just call it's all like orange Stilton Shropshire. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you kind of wanted to describe it, because it has the same veins, the lacy veins in mm -hmm. there, blue veins. Same type of rind. It's got yeah. a natural rind. In fact, mm -hmm. if you have a little bit of rind on your piece, look at it. It's it's edible. It's kind of funky and yeah. kind of scary looking, but you can eat it. Eat Not it gonna and try hurt it. You. Yeah, because it, it's got a whole different flavor on the end, on the rind there. Yeah. Okay, I don't like the goat, the, um... the La Dama Sagrada. <laughs> too much whiskey I don't like it with the scotch I don't it was it made the scotch really harsh mm. so this is so fun if you have any cheese left try it with each of these to see how it changes the cheese and the the drink it changes completely and most of yeah. all don't forget that little piece of chocolate right there that chocolate. we always put chocolate on there and I feel like you're almost about to forget it I do forget <laughs> it I'm not a sweet person normally but let's yeah. try it today everybody has a little chunk of chocolate on there and I think chocolate would go with all of them especially yeah. the I'm a Kentucky bourbon girl, I just decided. Nice. Through all of this, I mean, I like these, but I'm going to go back. I'm going back to that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I like mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. Okay, pronunciation. Uh-huh. Boon a haben. Boon a haben. With emphasis on the boon, what this guy. I, what did I say? Boon a haben. Oh, I said like boon a or something. <laughs> yeah, boon a haben. <laughs> Thank you for looking that up, Leanne. <laughs> Boonahaben. 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 Okay, that sounds good. Okay, what did I say with the? Uh, you like the uh -huh. you like the Kentucky bourbon. I do. It's sweet. It's mm -hmm. like candy. It's yeah. Like a little. Mm -hmm. And sweet is always good. I mean, I, I know that sweet alcoholic beverages kind of get kind of get frowned dissed. upon. They mm -hmm. get dissed. Mm -hmm. Sweet wine gets dissed. Sweet yeah. beer gets dissed. But for pairing purposes, they tend to do pretty well. Why? Because of the 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 contrast, yeah. So the salt. salty, yeah. the creaminess, the buttery thing with the cheese, yeah. it tends to just balance really nicely with sweeter um, beverages. You don't have to go really sweet, but um, think about ports or sauterne with um, with blue cheeses. Yeah, um, for sure. I mean, honey. Yeah, or this fig jam. Be the good. whole idea is is that it, it just sure. is a good balance. Rub the chocolate with this crazy whiskey pig uh -huh. is delicious. Very nice. Yeah, it tames the, uh -huh. the whiskey pig. Yeah, I love it all. Good stuff. Yeah, any other questions out there? I think we're just having too much fun. I hope everybody's <laughs> just eating. This is a lot left. I'm not going to drink it. Well, there's a, there's a lot of night left, so. That's right, it's, a, it's the holiday weekend, <laughs> yeah, right? That's right. Happy Memorial Day, everyone. And um, uh, what's up next? What we're doing, chilling and grilling on the 28th. Yes. We are going to grill. Somebody asked today that came in about, um, is it all, is there any meat? No. Mm -hmm. We are literally going to show you different ways you can cook cheese mm -hmm. on the grill. There's going to be three amazing things we're going to cook, and the kit that comes with it has all of that in it so it's going to be real fun when that's on thursday night and then we're working on some more cooking yeah a couple more cooking ones mm -hmm. we're going to do a couple cooking ones in june we're going to do platter making how to design the perfect little cheese tray and platter but we'll continue um, doing just ones where we kind of give taste. you a an yeah. update on maybe four new cheeses or four different cheeses yeah. and and continue on with it because mm -hmm. uh we love doing it and we've gotten some, yeah. some good feedback from you guys and so. for all of you out there supporting us um thank you yeah have a great holiday here's to summer and to new beginnings uh, and new things, great things to come. Cheers to cheese. All the best. Cheers to cheese. Bye, everyone. We Have love a good you. one. Bye.